The last lecture we introduced sequential circuits. A sequential circuit is a circuit which whose behavior depends not only on the type of set of inputs that you give, but also on the previous output. This is needed whenever you are doing something in a sequential fashion. I gave you some examples like counter. If you are counting, there is a counter in the bank or a exhibition. As people come in, it should count up. As people go, it should count down. If you do not know what was the previous count, how will the count increase or decrease? So, this the property of the circuit behaving where the input is the person coming in or the person going out. If you do not have the previous knowledge, the counter will always show 1. Every time a person comes in, it will show 1. Whereas, we want an extra addition on that. So, that is where the sequences are kept and then this is used for memory because memories are used extensively in um, computers and other digital systems. So, we need to have sequential circuits. So, I introduced sequence circuit yesterday the last lecture. The, the simplest possible sequence circuit is called a latch. A latch is something which latches the input and keeps it there for a while. Latching is nothing but taking in something and keeping it. So, the, the basic very basic circuit is RS latch. RS stands for reset set. So, this is the first basic circuit we discussed. The two NOR gates. This is R, this is S, this is called RS latch. Output of this is fed into this. This is the feedback I am talking about. If you want to know what has happened earlier, I should have some information from the output to the input. From some information from output has to come back to the input, only then I know what has happened earlier. So, this feedback is an important loop that is only found in sequential circuits. The other circuit is combination circuit in which you give a set of inputs, set of outputs come, when you change the inputs, outputs change irrespective of the behavior of the circuit earlier. If the circuit behavior is based on the input set irrespective of what has happened earlier, it is called a combination circuit because it just combines the gates, combines the input in different gates to get the outputs. In a sequential circuit, we have the background, the back, the feedback. Now, we also saw this has the property and we said this one is q, other is q bar, this is always complementary. Two outputs are not really needed, but generally there are two outputs. One is always the complement of the other. One is yes, the other is yes bar. <laughs> when yes and R is 1, 0, Q is 1, U bar is 0. Both are 0, it remains this. That is after 1, 0, in port you give 0, 0, the same output remains. Now you make the input 0, 1. Output is also 0, 1. And when you make 0, 0 again after this, it will become 0, 1 again, it remains. And you do not apply 1, 1. 
1 1 will give you 0 0 but that is not required because first of all it is q and q bar are not complementary. Second thing is after that the circuit behavior becomes indeterminate. It is not unstable in the sense that nothing is going to happen to the circuit, but you are not able to use it because how it behaves depends on the speed of these two gates whichever gate is faster. You do not want to have any circuit in which this function will depend on the speed of individual gates. Now, this condition q is equal to 1 q bar is 0 is called setting the flip flop with a value of 1, 0 to 1 output 0 is resetting the flip flop the output of 0. From here to here there is no change, sometimes you call it memory. Whenever whatever had, had before appears again, you call it memory. This is also no change or memory. This is not done, this is not allowed. This condition is not allowed. Not allowed in the sense, not useful. So, it is not allowed. Okay. So, the behavior of this flip flop is then very easy. You have a latch with two NAND gates back to back. One input is called R, the other input is called S. If you give R is equal to 0 and S is equal to 1, output Q becomes 1. When you give R is equal to 1 and S is equal to 0, output Q becomes 1, uh, 0. And that condition, once you make this R and S value, even if you remove the value and make both of them 0, 0, whatever was the earlier condition, the output will remain. The same thing can be gotten out of 2. What is not allowed is both S and R being 1, 1. So, S, R and S and of S R should not be 1, one of them should be 0 yeah. or both of them can be 0. Here you can use the same thing is a NAND gate yeah, Q and Q bar. <laughs> Here you have S, there you have R and S, here you have S and R. Here the function table is if S is 1 and R is 0, Q is 0. Now the opposite of when S is 1, the output is 0, not 1. In this case, when S is 1, output is 1. Here, when S is 1, output is 0. And then you make 1, 1 makes this same, no change, similar to memory condition. This is called reset state. Whenever Q is 0, it is called reset the next Q is 1 is called Now, then you have 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. So, again you put S is equal to 0 and R is equal to 1, the output becomes 1, set things so there, in this case there is no change. So, 1, 1 does not create a change. But that depends on the what previous state. Yeah, no, sequence circuit. In the sequence circuit, one one input gives an output which depends on what was the earlier output. In the combination circuit, you do not In the combination circuit, you give inputs, outputs come, change any input, output changes. In this case, in one case, I have this output. After this, if I give 1, 1, the output does not change. The another said I have 1 here and 0 here. After this, if we give 1, 1, it remains same. So, 
the behavior of the circuit with 1 1 as the input depends on what is the output before this that is all there is in a cause sequence circuitry and then again here 0 0 is not allowed because it gives you 1 1 1 1 is not a thing but then q and q bar are not coming more than that it becomes indeterminate because after this the behavior of circuit depends on the speed of the gates so it is not allowed. Here you have to make sure S and R, S or R should not be 0, both S and R should not be 0, one of them should be at least 1. So, this is an AND gate condition and input of S and R should be 1, should not be 1 or input of S or output of S and R should not be 0, that is what it is. Now, we said this the latch will change state, why is it called latch I told you, it is it grabs the it grabs the input combination and the output depends on that, it is a latching operation is called. As long as S and R remain the same, the output will remain the same or even if I R and S changes to 1 0 0, the output will remain same, the output remains change after this is if 0 0 is applied after either R and S 1 0 or 0 1, the output remains that is why it is called latch, keep holding on some, to something, holding on to something that is a latching. Now, but the problem is S changes R changes sometimes, we do not want to change it, but something happens in circuit some stray noise or sp spike some pick up. So, we will want a condition this is called S R latch or S bar R bar latch. Why this S bar R bar is behavior is opposite of this behavior. Now, so, but we do not like this at all because we do not want any stray input unintentional changes in S and R, when it is not intended, it can still change the output. So, we would like to make sure that only when it is intended, the output should change. For that, we need an extra signal called gate signal. I put extra two extra nine gates in the input. And a signal called gate or is also called a clock. Why it is clock, I will tell you. This becomes And to this, I add the original R bar S, S bar R bar latch. Q Q bar. Now. There are two things that are interesting here. One thing is it was always complementary. When S is 1, R is 0, setting condition, it should become really 1, but it is 0. So, that is why we called it S bar R bar. Now, that is changed because of the input NAND gate. Input NAND gate removes that condition of opposite or complementary output number 1. So, this becomes SR. Zero, 0, no change and 
0, 1, output is 1 which is reset. One zero output is one setting condition and one one is still not allowed. But there is a third signal called gate signal or the, or the clock signal. The whole thing can happen. only if the clock is high. If the clock is low, whatever you put in S and whatever you put in R, the circuit does not change condition, which means I now have the possibility of blocking any changes in S and R whenever I do not need it. If I do not need any change in S and R to occur at the output, I will make sure gate is 0. So, what is a clock? Clock is a continuous signal. Clock is based on time keeps going from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. As a function of time, the frequency of the clock depends on the frequency at which you want to work at the circuit. Very high frequency circuits in computers, gigahertz, also possible, but you do not want these changes, S and R are going to happen very slowly. In that case, we can have a clock which is very slow, very low frequency. So, the frequency of the clock can be controlled by you, and on that frequency, only it works. So, only when the gate is high or the clock is high, the circuit behaves normally. When the clock is 0, the circuit disabled, the circuit remains the same output as it was before. Whatever is the output here will remain here. This is called the period of the clock. From 1, this is called period. T or frequency of the clock is inverse of T, no over T. So, the enough time there, whenever we want the output to change, we will put the clock as high, get the value of SRR captured or latched, and then you want that to be remaining there for some time, remove the clock, make it 0 and then it will remove, remain in the output. Then you want to change the SNR value again, you want to change the output value again, enable the clock to 1, make SNR 0, SN, whatever signal you want to give in SNR, that will be captured and that will be latched on and then remove that clock, again it will remain that same thing. This is how the clock works. The clock frequency is not fixed, depends on the circuit operation. Suppose you are building a computer, it has to be very fast. You are building a small circuit like a counter, clock need not be. Because we are going to count the number of people, how fast can somebody walk in or walk out? There is no need for the clock to be very high. That is how we do it. So, this is how it is. So, now I have the following thing. Supposing the S is this as a function of T, it remains 0, becomes 1, again it becomes 0, I have R. becomes 0. So, 1 and again becomes 0. Now, the Q will be 
No change with the curve and zero. This is Q output. Now S is equal to one, R is equal to zero, the output has to be one. Q has to be one. So at this point, Q has to become one. The point I am trying to make is at this point when my s is equal to 1, r is equal to 0, s, s becomes 0 again, q does not return to 0. It continues because the clock s is equal to 0 is the same state. Until the next pulse arrives, here it will change from because r is 1 and s is 0, q should be 0 and it will continue like this. This is value of Q. This is ideally, but in practice, in practical circuits, all gates have a small delay. What is the delay? The time it takes for the input to reach the output. If you give an input, the output will change after a small amount of time. Depends on the type of circuit. Today. We have very, very fast circuits, delays in terms of nanoseconds and picoseconds. Or if you want more delay, also possible. Now, that means that does not change immediately. It changes after some time. After some time, when the input changes from 0 to 1, At this point only it changes. So, there is a small amount of delay between the time the S becomes 1 and Q becomes 1. This is the delay of the flip flop of the latch. Similarly, when R becomes 1, Q does not become 0 immediately, it takes a while. This is again the same delay of the circuit. This is in the practical circuits. That will tell you how fast you can work with the circuit. The delay is very large, you cannot apply the frequency very high. Delay is very small, you can apply the frequency very fast frequency. Now, <clears throat> we have seen a latch into which you can make the circuit Q as 1 or 0 or you can set it or reset it and leave it at that if you remove the inputs and make it 0, 0 in the case of uh, SR flip flop, SR latch and 1 1 in the case of R, R, S bar, R bar latch. And we have also talked about the clock which enables the output to change when the input changes. But when the clock is high, then also it can R and S can come spurious changes. I have some change in mind S and R. So, it is better that Q and Q bar change only once, but sometimes when the clock is high, more than once the change can occur in my RS values. If the RS values change more than once when the clock is high, that will be reflected here because whenever the clock is high, this will change. You do not want that to happen, then you have to have another technique. We talked about it last time briefly. There are two types of flip flops. One is called level triggered. So, we do not draw these circuits every time we want to discuss flip flops, we put it in a box. This is called SR flip flop. 
and clock. This is Q, Q bar. This is SR. This is called flip flop. Whenever you apply a gate or the clock to a latch, it's called a flip flop. The flip flop is a latch with a gate, with a clock signal. Now, now when the clock changes, clock is one, the output changes based on input. Any time, any number of times, as long as the clock is high, such a circuit is called level triggered. That means the clock level decides the change. Level triggered circuit is the one in which level of the clock decides the changes and as long as the level of the clock is high, any number of changes in SNR will be accommodated in the output and the last output will only be what we will be seeing. But that is not good. I would like to have SNR change only once in a clock cycle and that value reflected in the output. In that case, I should go for an edge triggered flip flop. Edge triggered flip flop, which means when the clock goes high or low, only once in a clock cycle. So, in a positive edge trigger flip flop, when the clock goes from 0 to 1. At this time interval alone, the output will change. At this time instant alone, at this instant of time it will change. Otherwise, there will be no change. So, when it becomes 0 again and goes to next cycle, only then it will change. In a negative edge triggered flip flop, the same thing happens when the clock goes from 1 to 0. At this instant of time, the flip flop output changes based on the input. Based on the input at this time, the output changes and then again we have to wait for the next time it changes. In the negative edge regard, this changes when the input goes from 0 to 1, 1 to 0 and only at and the other times the changes are ignored. And the next time it goes, only it can change one more time. This is very useful because we want the changes in the circuit only one time, once in a clock period. So at this time it happens. Whatever so whatever changes has occurred before this point in time that change will be recognized and the output will change at this instant of time. After that even if the clock is enabled or high, it changes in the input will not affect the output. Again you have to wait for the next time the pulse changes from 0 to 1 positive edge. Only then whatever changes happened after this before this 
that will be recognized. Same way, if it changes at the time when it goes from 1 to 0 and anything happening before that would be recognized and output will change only at this instant of time. Again after this, we have to wait for one full clock period before the next time the clock goes from 1 to 0. This is called negative edge decode. This is very useful. So, when the negative positive edge decode we draw, we put an arrow here. So, we have three types of flip flops. If you put like this clock, This is called the edge trigger, a uh, level trigger symbol. If you put like this, the narrow, this is called positive edge trigger. put like this same symbol with a bubble in front. A bubble is always an inversion operator. An inverter has a bubble. An inversion. This is called negative edge trigger. You have a question there? You put his hand here. No, sir. Oh, yeah. All right. Yes? No, I don't have any question. Okay. Right. Fine. No problem. Uh. Now, the problem still exists with the SAR flip flop or RS flip flop. What is the problem? So we have now made it edge trigger, so only one change is occurring. The, first of all, we put a clock. First of all, we had a latch in which we can grab the output input and grab, keep it for a while. And then we put a clock to tell when it will change, affect when the change will affect the output. Now, still we are not answer. Uh, address one issue, namely in SR flip flop and RS flip flop, R bar, S bar, S bar, R bar flip flop, that 1 1 condition or 0 0 condition that becomes difficult to handle. So, we can remove mm -hmm. that also if you always make S and R complementary. Suppose mm -hmm. I have an SR flip flop. Hmm? No. Okay. This is SR flip flop. 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 Flip Yes, yes. 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 Y
இது எப்படி இருக்கும் இன்வெர்டர் அண்ட் இது அங்க எப்படி இருக்கும் தி ஆர் இன்புட் தெர் இஸ் நோ செப்பரேட் ஆர் ஆர் இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் இன்வர்ஸ் ஆஃப் எஸ் வெச் பார்க்கலாமா தென் வாட் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் either it is the function is simple now clock is zero this s and r together we call it d because s is always complement of r there is only one input is flip flop that input i am going huh? to call d seriya irukuma input d output If clock is zero, out input doesn't affect the output. No change. If clock is one, if d is one, d is zero. If this is zero, this one it is reset condition. So output is zero, which is reset. If it is zero one one set. So either I can set the flip flop or reset the flip flop, or make no change. Both of them being zero or both of them being one cannot occur. Yes and R. Yes and R. R. S bar, R bar, zero will not occur. That means we are having S R always complementary. This is called a D flip flop. So we had S R flip flop. So we have a D flip flop. Only one input D. We complement D to put it to the other input. So if it is zero, output is zero. If it is one, output is one. Assuming clock is one. If clock is zero, nothing happens. This is usually used for data storage. That is why it's called D flip flop. Data storage. User for. In memories, you find D flip flop only. In computer memories, the flip flop we find is D flip flop. So now we have two flip flops already. In one flip flop, Q plus is yes. will come to that a little later now this one one condition should not be met it should be always met that it one yes yes or flip flop both should not be one so we can make it 1 0 or 0 1 1 0 will set it to 1 0 1 1 0 1 will make a reset to 0 and we can make it same by removing the input and make it 0 0 that why are we wasting this one one condition that can be now addressed by what is known as a jk flip flop supposing i modify this d flip flop
So, I have two inputs, one input is called a J, the other input is called a K. And the J flip flop input, the J input all goes to the AND gate, which is connected back to Q bar. And K gate is connected back to Q. And these two together is given to an OR gate whose output is fed into the D input. This flip flop is called a JK flip flop. In this case, the D is J Q bar, J and Q bar, R, K bar and Q. Oh, K goes to an inverter. Now, since we know that Q bar is always D, Q plus is always D, next Q is always D. Now, what is happening to D is J, K and D. If J and K are both 0, 0, D is previous Q and this is also Q. This is next Q, Q next or Q plus they call it, Q, this is memory or no change. When J is 0, K is 1, D becomes 0 and Q is also, Q plus also becomes 0. This is research state. One zero becomes one. This is because Q or Q bar. This will become one set state. One one. This becomes Q bar. So Q plus is Q bar. It is complement or toggle. They call it. <coughs> If you keep 1, 1, D, J and K, 1, 1, it keeps changing with every clock cycle. All this assuming your clock to be 1. If the clock is 0, whatever happens here, whatever happens here, this is previous, no change, no change. Now we have three flip flops we have discussed. We will again summarize them.
to summarize you have an SR flip flop Q plus they call it Q and Q plus. What is this is the present state and Q plus is next state. If Q is now, now SR is 0, 0, Q and same as Q bar, no change. S is 0, R is 1, Q is 0, we do not have to write Q bar, no, we will only put Q plus, no change, next Q, next Q is called Q plus, 0, reset. 1, 0, 1, set, 1, 1, not allowed. Symbol, Behavior Q plus is next Q is always the present S present R bar times the present Q. If Q is the present Q, this is next Q. Only one condition is both S and R should not be 1. D flip flop, very simple. We have D and Q clock Q next always present D. Next Q is always present D, that means if we write the table, if D is 0, Q plus is 0, D is 1, to Q plus is 1. Simplest. Then we have the JK flip flop. We have J and K, two inputs. Clock bar J and K next Q call is Q plus J is zero zero Q plus is previous Q. No change. Present Q is as the next Q. 0, 1, it is reset. 1, 0, 
it is one set. One, one. Q plus is the present Q bar. That means it is toggle. So, means it keeps changing from zero to one to one to zero. If I have a clock, with every clock pulse, the output changes. If I put J and K are one in the flip flop, if I make J is equal to one, K is equal to one, and as every clock comes, Q keeps changing from zero to one to zero to one, zero to one, zero, one, zero, one, like that. That is called a toggling condition or switching condition. The characteristic equation is Q next. is J present Q plus K bar present Q. So, this Q are present Qs and if always one only toggling, you do not want any set reset conditions. then you can have what is known as a T flip flop. In a T flip flop, J K Give one. This input is called T input. J is called K is called T. This is clock. Now, what happens since it is always J and K are one? What happens is when T is zero, Q next. Is the same as percent Q. One next Q is complement of the percent Q. So the equation will be. Q plus would be T exclusive R Q. That means if T is one, output is Q bar. If the present Q is one, Next Q is zero. Present Q is zero. Next Q is one. Now, if T is zero, output remains Q, no change. So these four equations are called characteristic equations. One two three these are called characteristic equations. So, characteristic equation of JK flip flop, characteristic equation of Q T flip flop, 
Kan je zien, kun je snap een zaafle flap? Kan je zien, kun je snap die vle flap? Nou, these equation, these tables are called, even though they look like a truth table, they are really called characteristic table. The characteristic table, characteristic, characteristic, characteristic table is slightly different from truth table. Truth table you have 0, 1 or do not care as outputs. Here we have 0, 1 and q bar or q. 0, 1, q bar. So, this characteristic table is something like a truth table, it is a function table. It explains the behavior of the flip flop. So, we have seen all four flip flop types. Yes, sir, can be used, but it is a problem that SNR has to be. Make sure that S and R should not be one at the same time. May be difficult to meet that condition. So either you said either use a D flip flop just to store a data one bit or zero, data bit of zero or one, or use a JKL flip flop where you can set as a zero or a one, reset as a zero or keep it as same without change, or you want to toggle it every clock cycle, the output changes, complements itself. And T flip flop is nothing but a simplified version of JK flip flop. JK flip flop with only toggling condition. That is why it is called T. T means toggle. That is why it is called T flip flop. T flip flop means it toggles. And all of them assuming that clock is applied. When the clock is 0, these characteristic equations do not work. When the clock is 0, output remains what it was before. Every flip flop every flip flop there is there are two other extra signals or pins can be any flip flop. Take D flip flop. Two signals called preset, PST they call it, preset, CLR, clear. PST stands for preset. What they mean is when you apply a 0 to preset, P is at 0, Q becomes 0, I am sorry, Q becomes 1. Now the other inputs are disabled. After this, D change will not be recognized, D input rather not D change.
or I'll put yeah D input does not change output. That means if you want to just the output to be 1 always, Q always 1, when the clock may come and go, clock may be running 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 0 to 1, but I want D will change, but I want for some reason I do not want the output to change at all to this is. Similarly, when clear is 0, Q is 0 regardless of of other inputs. Including clock, including clock, whatever happens to inputs D or JK or whatever output remains 0. So, if you want to make the output of the flip flop 0 irrespective of what input you are giving irrespective of the clock is there or not you apply 0 to the clear input. Similarly, whenever you want the output to be 1 irrespective of the clock irrespective of the other inputs then you make it preset to be 1 preset to be 0, but both cannot be 0 at the same time because the flip flop does not know it is a confusing signal. You cannot say preset 0 and clear 0 that means you want preset to be 1 and pre, pre, you want q to be 1 and q to be 0 at the same time it is not possible. So, do not p set and this clear should not be both 0. So, we covered a lot of material today. We started with the basic SR lath using NOR gates. In NOR gate SR latch, 1 0 sets are Q is equal to 1, 0 1 sets it to 0 preset, and after that, if 0 0 occurs the input the output remains same. So, the output condition correspond to 0 0 input depends on what was the previous output that is why it is a sequential circuit. Condition of 1 1 should not be there. Similarly, for SR flip flop we called it R bar S bar or S bar R bar based on 2 NOR gate, NAND gates is the opposite 0 1 Sets, sets the flip flop, 1 0 resets the flip flop. After each of this, a 0 0 1 1 input will make it same output, nothing happens, and 0 0 input should not 1 1 input should not be given. So, I will repeat it again, I think. I think I got a bit confused. Okay. In RS latch, R S latch, yes. Can I unmute, sir? No, just a couple of minutes more. All right, sir. No, Four no, minutes. I want to ask you if I can unmute, unmute everyone if you want to ask any question. No, no, I want to finish in two more minutes summary. After that, you can unmute. I will tell you. So, SR flip flop 1 1 should not occur, R bar S bar latch or S bar R bar latch 1 1 condition, 0 0 condition should not occur. 
but once you put an invert gate signal then it becomes a short flip flap s is equal to s is equal to 0 or is equal to 1 s is equal to 0 0 condition no change 0 1 makes reset 1 0 makes set and 1 1 again not possible assuming gate is 1 or clock is 1 if the clock is 0 nothing happens then we went on to introduce clock and discuss four different types of flip flops sr d jk and t and each one of them i wrote the table which is similar to truth table but not exactly called truth table because it's not only 0 1 and don't care it comes on previous no change memory state and all that does not come in truth table such tables are called characteristic tables which explains the behavior which describes the behavior of the flip flops we have the symbols for all of them and equations which describe this flip flop called characters equation so for d we have this a simple flip flop just for storage data if d is equal to 1 clock is 1 q becomes 1 d is 0 clock is 1 q becomes 0 if the clock is not there whatever input you give will remain in the output this is the characteristic table and this is the characteristic equation then the condition of 1 1 not being allowed is removed in the jk flip flop there the set condition reset condition memory conditions remain the same as the sr flip flop but with the 1 1 condition make sure that the output changes with every clock cycle every clock cycle if j and k are 1 with every clock cycle output becomes the complement of the previous clock cycle this is the characteristic equation this is the characteristic table then we wanted to make only t flip toggling mode instead of having all other combinations we make j is equal to 1 k is equal to 1 and tie it together is called t input in which case it becomes always if clock is 1 output is complement of the input previous state if clock is 0 nothing happens we also talked about triggering without clock when the clock is there anytime the clock is there the inputs can change output the level triggering which is not advisable because they may keep changing we would like to monitor or sample the inputs only once every clock cycle so we have go for edge triggering that means when the clock goes from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 only once in a clock cycle after that so whatever changes occurred before that will be recognized at the point the clock goes from 0 to 1 that is called positive edge trigger similarly after that you will have to wait till the next positive edge 0 to 1 similarly in a negative edge trigger flip flop it changes once irrespective of what has happened in the earlier thing the output will be recognized only once when the clock goes from 1 to 0 and you have to wait for the next clock cycle 1 to 0 before you can proceed further that is it today we have covered a lot of material and we also talked about preset and clear signals if preset is if you want the output to be 1 irrespective of the inputs irrespective of the clock you make preset 0 you want the output to be 0 regardless of the inputs and regardless of the clock make clear is equal to 0 but make sure that both of them do not remain 0 at the same time because it's a confusing state and the flip flop does not know how to behave. Okay, I stop here. Mr. Kandan, you can unmute. Yes, sir. I am yes. unmuting them, sir. Any questions you can ask, you guys? Are there any questions? Sir, I am muted everyone. Yeah. You said toggle mode. Toggle. Uh, yes, sir. As well as racing is there, what is the difference between toggle and racing? Racing, we did not, I did not mention the word racing even once today. Did you notice that? Uh, I know that. Uh, <laughs> I, wait, I wait, have wait. Some confusion. wait, let me complete my sentence. You are introducing a term which I did not use and ask me to define the difference. See, toggling is yes, what. Yes. <laughs> 
facing his undesired toggling. It keeps going all the time up and down, up and down, up and down. We do not want that. Whenever the clock is high in a JKF flop, when the output keeps on changing, in the toggle mode only once in the clock cycle it will change. Suppose the frequency is 1000 hertz, only once every clock cycle the output will change from 1 to 0, next clock cycle the output will go from 0 to 1, this is called toggling mode, controlled change, uncontrolled change. Whenever the clock level is high, without any control, when the clock level is high again, remember, not when it is 0, because of the limited time delay between input and output, the clock on time is much larger compared to the flip flop delay time. So, it keeps on changing from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 which is not desired anywhere, that is called racing. I did not mention racing, racing can be avoided by whatever I have shown today, okay. And we will okay. talk, we'll talk about one more mode of triggering, today we talked about the edge triggering, positive edge and ne negative edge level triggering. Tomorrow, next class, there is one more type called master slave flip flop, then it will become clearer, there is no need for any concern about racing. All those problems were previous problems, today we have controlled everything. I do not think you have racing in sequence, sequence, sequence clocked sequential circuits, this is called clocked sequential circuits or synchronous circuits. Synchronous circuits do not have any such problem, okay. Okay. You, read, you read somewhere uh, 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 racing, but I made sure to avoid that, it is not there. Any question? Any other question? Sir, uh, clock is continuously changing, uh, Zero uh, clock is from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 changing uh, correctly, 0 yeah. means 0 volt, 1 means 5 volt, we, uh, we can consider. Yeah. We can consider. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, crystal oscillator circuit uh, it will generate. Then uh, if I change positive logic gates, negative logic gates also available. I didn't again say positive logic, negative logic. So far in my course, today is 14th or 15th lecture. I have never once used the word positive logic, negative logic. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. You are uh -huh. reading things which I am not covering. Yeah. I can tell you what a positive logic and negative logic is. If positive level, high one level is higher than the zero level, it is called positive logic. If one level is smaller than the zero level, it is called negative logic. Supposing I have a circuit in which one is zero volts, or oh, I mean uh, one is uh, uh, one is zero volts and zero is five volts. This is negative logic, even though both the voltages are positive, it is called negative logic. Negative logic. That means high level is smaller than the low level. Again, it is required some places. For example, you can uh, your AND gate in positive logic becomes OR gate in a negative logic. But yes, normally yes, we use positive logic. And normally we use all these things. These extra things just for exam they can ask you questions. Your teacher may ask what is negative, define negative logic. What is the point? Where are we using it? You should ask the examiner. We do not. Um, the what I am asking is positive edge trigger, negative edge trigger is available. Yes. As well as positive large, uh, clock also that kind of thing is available or not I am asking. Positive logic is already there. If I am See, if Clark I want to heavy. build a negative logic circuit, I can build it. You can't prevent negative me. logic circuit. I need to build a negative logic uh, uh, clock. Why are you bringing clock here? Two things are different, sir. We are talking about clock 
edge triggering, positive edge triggering, negative edge triggering means when the clock goes from 0 to 1, it is positive triggering, positive edge 1 to 0, there is nothing negative there, 0 volts is 0, 5 volts is 1, just because it goes from lower value to higher value, we call it positive edge triggering. Going from higher value to lower value, we call it negative edge triggering. There is no negative voltage at all there, sir. There is no negative voltage there. Whereas in the, in the negative logic, we can have a negative voltage. You can have 27 volts as 1 and 22 volts as 0 is allowed. Or you can have 27 volts as 0 and 22 volts as 1. That is negative logic, even though both are positive. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, if we are having the computer, yeah. one clock is used, four circuit is using the same clock or different class, circuit is different clock, sir? Yeah, computer, do not bring in computer here. It is a very complex digital system. We are doing the, we are doing kindergarten and you are talking about college. Yeah, it is po generally the clocks are different. They are all derived. What do you mean by derived is I will not have randomly different clocks. They will be controlled. All the other clocks, there will be one clock, master clock. All other clocks may be higher frequency or lower frequency. All derived from that so that the phase problems should not occur. If I have oh, okay, random, okay. random clocks, then all sorts of phase problems will come. Okay. Oh, one master clock will be there. From that, uh, all the uh, circuit needs to clock is derived. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay. okay. Sir, another is uh, uh, we are using latch to build memory. You said. Oh no, no, don't. Again, you are simplifying everything I am saying. You are asking different things. Latch is an example of to keep something after you put it in. When you put a set as 0 or 1, 0, remove the input, it remains 1, 0 until you change the input again. This condition okay. called latch. Memory is what I said here, D flip flop is the memory. I wrote here, D flip flop is already used for memory because I put a 1 there with a clock. Okay. Latch is we are no using clock. latch is no clock. Latch is no okay. clock. Okay. Uh, if we are building RAM, RAM means RAM using D flip flop. It is called a okay. RAM. It is called a RAM, not RAM. 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 Uh, uh. Tell uh, me. That 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 is not uh, volatile memory. That is not volatile. That is volatile. RAM is a uh, D flip flop. RAM is a volatile memory. What is volatile? But when the power is removed, means out, when we remove the power, then when we remove the power, uh, data will go. But in called, this, uh, wait, wait. That is called volatile, not non-volatile. That is called volatile. What is volatile? Uh, in this, tell me. Remove again. power, uh, data will go. Yeah, naturally in RAM. Uh, in this flip flop, when we remove cl clock as well as a uh, uh, power. Then uh, it will retain memory. No, then, it will so not. It's non it will not. It will not retain. D flip flop will not retain. Again, you have to put it there back. That is why you need ROM. Okay. RAM consists of D flip flops. And D flip flops or RAMs are volatile memories. When you remove power, when you remove okay. power, output will disappear. All D flip flops will become 0 or 1, we do not know, random. And then you have to again put it. These are useful. When we remove power, means, when we remove power, means we remove clock also. Clock automatically goes when you remove power. Everything is depending on the power. And the D flip flop clock is removed, it retains the value, no changes occurred, you said. Clock so, what is, I am asking? I think you are confusing two things. When the circuit is still powered, D flip flop is still powered with 5 volts and 0 volts, clock is 0, 
means whatever you put remains the same thing. At that time any change in D will not reflect in the output. Whereas, when you remove the power also of a D flip flop, that behavior is not correct. Then it will become random value. Again, you have to start with whatever you want to put. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.